Uh, this is Alex Bainbridge from Green Left. I'm here with Sam Wainwright. He's an organiser and spokesperson for the Eco Socialism 2024 conference, which will be held at the end of June in Bulu, Perth, this year. In recent days, Zionist organisations in Australia, the Murdoch Media, and Senator James Patterson of the Liberal Party, have been waging a campaign against the participation of Leila Khaled at the Eco Socialism 2024 conference. Sam, can you just start by telling us who is Leila Khaled and why have you invited her to this conference? Look, Leila Khaled is quite a historic and iconic leader of the Palestinian liberation movement. Uh, she's with the organisation, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and also a member of the Palestinian National Council, which is effectively the, the, the parliamentary body that gathers together Palestinian communities, both diaspora uh, and in the occupied territories. So what is your reaction to this Zionist campaign? Look, I think on, on one level it's not surprising, but it's also um, something we need to reject out of hand, really. Uh, in, in the first instance, as I said, she's a member of the Palestinian National Council. So, and many countries around the world, not yet Australia, unfortunately, uh, and this is something you know that, that we can talk about, uh, but many countries in the world rec recognise the state of Palestine already. Uh, and have and have diplomatic relationships with Palestine, and as such, she should be viewed as a visiting member of Parliament uh, of of another country. And I can tell you right now that there are foreign leaders and so-called dignitaries who have done things far worse than than the worst thing you could say about Leila Khaled, um, who, who who've been invi who get invited to Australia all the time. So her her no notoriety um, in the West, anyway, certainly springs from the fact that she was the first female hijacker. Uh, so she, she she hijacked planes in in, in 1969 and 1970. Um, I should say she she did jail time for them. Um, a lot of unlike a lot of the other um, um, criminal dignitaries that come to this country, um, but since has had a long you know long involvement in the, in the Palestinian liberation movement. Uh, now, as I said, th there's two things to say about that 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 that, 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 that hijacking. One is it was fifty. Well, three things. One it was fifty years ago. Two, she she did jail time for them. And three. The fact that that she did that in a moment in the Palestinian liberation movement cannot lead us to then exclude her and say, well, she's a terrorist and therefore we can't hear from her forever. Um, I mean, Prime Minister Narendra Modi um, of, of India has, has come to Australia and he's been associated with horrendous pogroms of Muslims uh, in his home state, Gujarat, where perhaps 30,000 Muslims were, were, were killed in Gujarat while, while he was the... Um, uh, the chief minister, I think, is the title of of that state, and you could you could name other you, know, you could name other you know foreign leaders who've done who've done horrible things to people. The, but the other thing I'd I'd stress as well is that um, you know the Palestinian liberation movement has included armed struggle against occupation, uh, which and we'll come we might talk about that a bit in a bit more detail later. But it, it's you know an oppressed people who are occupied have a right to fight back. And sometimes they're going to do that using techniques and means that we may not always agree with. But, but that doesn't mean they're not authentic representatives, you know, at the time. But that doesn't mean they're not authentic re representatives of that struggle and we can't ever hear them for, forever. And I'd, I'd draw your attention to the fact that the African National Congress never renounced its right to use armed struggle against the apartheid regime and had an armed wing that did exactly that. Uh, and for that reason, the United States and a number of other Western countries counted Nelson Mandela and the ANC as a terrorist organisation right up to the very eve of the fall of apartheid. Similarly, uh, the Good Friday Agreement would not have been possible had it not been for the fact that um, representatives of paramilitaries involved in the troubles in Northern Ireland were actually prepared to sit down and meet together and hammer out the Good Friday Agreement. Now, Margaret Thatcher had to be out of the way until that happened because she insisted that, well, she wasn't going to negotiate with terrorists. But uh, now the new chief minister of Northern Ireland comes from Sinn Féin. So you can't just, you know, it's it, 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 it's, it's neither practical, pragmatic, realistic, or, or frankly moral, just to say, well, we're not, we're, we're not going to hear from, hear from you because of the struggle you were associated with in the past or everything, anything you've done in the past, that sort of stuff. I'm not saying that there can't be, there's not a place for, for debate about that, but to, 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 to say that we're not, the Leila Khalid has no place in this country um, because she was involved in those hijacking events. 50 years ago is utterly ludicrous and it's even more ludicrous coming from liberal and uh, or labor politicians and i say labor politicians as well because day before yesterday in the senate um uh senator katie gallagher who's, who's being wedged by the liberals i should, should think you know 
ruled out the possibility of Leila Khalid ever getting a visa in this country. Now, let's uh, coming from them, that, that this is extraordinary stuff. So let's 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 bear in mind that that Israel is almost certainly committing genocide right now. Uh, right now, is using mass starvation as a weapon of war. And what has the Australian government, with the support of the Liberal Party, done? Not cancelled arms export permits to Israel and not reinstated funding the UN Relief Agency. As Israel is using starvation against a civilian population as a weapon of war. So, I mean, frankly, you know, when you really step back from things, the, the, the idea that, um, you know, people like James Patterson or, or Senator Katie Gallagher can give, you know, lectures on, on who, who, you know, who, who should and shouldn't come to Australia is, 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 is frankly laughable. So, I mean, you mentioned um, Modi, and you could also mention people like George Bush in the more respectable West who's you know, committed wars of aggression and even John Howard. Uh, so there's lots of people who have done terrible things. But, I mean, I guess, you know, do they have a point? Is is she a terrorist? And and I, and I guess also could you talk more about this question of whether or the right of oppressed people to resist occupation? Yeah, well, of, co- of course, the quip is always, you know, one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. Uh, and if we were to use a – I mean – yeah, the problem with the word terrorism, it's, it's become so overused, used and abused, uh, particularly by Western politicians, that it, you know, it, it's kind of, it kind of loses its meaning. So, I mean, essentially, most Western politicians will assert that any, you know, any force you know, that resists their will, you know, that resi- you know, you know, by force of arms, is a terrorist, you know. Um, and by that logic, you know, every independence movement, every, you know, it w- w- would be a terrorist organization or, 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 or the rest of it. I mean, let's use let's let, let's take a, 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 cons- a fairly logically, a, a logical and consistent meaning of the term terrorism. So using violence, of, I would say using violence or the threat of violence against the civilian population to achieve a military or political aim. Now, if you use that definition of, of terrorism, which I think is a pretty solid um, and consistent one. Well, you know, clearly the firebombing of Dresden by the Allies was an act of terrorism on a grand scale. Uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were acts of terrorism on a grand scale. Uh, the invasion of Iraq was an act of terrorism. Uh, so there's been lots of act, acts of terrorism. Now, having said that, of course, sometimes liberation movements also use forms of violence that might make some of us wince. And we can debate the morality of them and, and also whether it, 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 even just the pragmatic value of them. Like, so for instance, in the case of the IRA, the IRA uh, you know, I'm I'm someone who would say oppressed people have the right to use force of arms to resist their oppression, um, and that included um, the cause of Irish unity. But did you know the IRA ca- carry uh, yeah, carrying out bombings in you know, of pubs on mainland Britain as opposed to genuine military targets? Not only was, you, I think you could make the case very easily that not only was it not moral, but it, that didn't actually help their cause, right? Um, but that doesn't change the fact that the IRA was still an authentic representation of uh, the Irish national movement. It's not the only representation, not a perfect representation, but it was a genuine representation of that movement. And the proof of that is the fact that Bobby, IRA volunteer Bobby Sands, while on hunger strike in jail, got elected to the British Parliament. So, and of course, and of course, Margaret Thatcher, her response was just, "Oh well, we're, we're not going to, um, we're not going to negotiate with these people because they're terrorists." Um, end of story. Well, you, you know, you, Sands' election to Parliament proves that this represented a national, you know, a national liberation cause. It had you had you had to sit down and negotiate with it, you know. Um, so that's you know, and when when examining this question as well, um, it's also very important not to equate the violence of the oppressed with the violence of the oppressor as well. You know, even if you think, oh well, you know, doing the, um, you know, hijacking, maybe that wasn't a good idea, or it, or you, or if you condemn, as I do, um, any targeting of civilians that might have happened on October seventh, but you can't, you can you, you can't equate the violence of the oppress of the oppressor with the violence of the oppressor. So, I mean, l- let me give you another another historical example. I mean, one of the you know epic achievements of of, of humanity was the Haitian slave revolt, Second Republic in 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 the Western Hemisphere in the Americas. You know, inspired by their own crushing oppression and by the by the purported ideals of the French Revolution. Of course, Napoleon soon had other ideas and tried to take Haiti back for France. You know, but in the course of that Haitian slave re- revolt, you know, it wasn't just the slave owners and their overseers that were killed, but you know, sometimes their families were as well, and any other white people that the uh, that the, the slaves rising up to get their hands on. Now, was that pleasant? Was that nice? No, clearly not. You know, but really, with with with, with the benefit of two hundred years hindsight, would any any of us say, oh well? 
ask the, <laughs> ask the question also, you know, what was the original sin? You know, what was the cause and effect? What was the greater violence? The actual system of slavery or the Haitian slave result? Well, I mean, even asking the question answers it, right? Um, and this is, and there's nothing fundamentally different with um, armed response by Palestinians to their oppression as well, including where they do things which we might think are wrong. You know, like it's, the, there's no question that Israel suffered a trauma. Israeli society suffered a trauma on October 7. And as I've said before, any targeting of, you know, I want national liberation movements to abide by the Geneva Convention, you know, no question about it, um, for moral and pragmatic reasons, right? But, you know, Palestinian society has suffered a trauma at least as bad as that Israeli society suffered on October 7 every single year, you know, and worse for 75 years. And that, that you know, it, that's the dialogue that the people who are trying to block Leila Khalid don't want to have. That's the real that that's the real guts of the matter. They 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 want oppressed people to sit in a corner and die in silence. That's what they and that's what they mean by peace. What they mean by peace is oppressed, occupied people just giving up at best and at worst just dying in a corner in silence. And Leila Khalid is someone who's never done that her whole life, and that's why we should hear from her. I'm guessing you would agree that part of the reason for this outrage, perhaps some have described it as a fake outrage, is is the context of this uh, Israeli genocide against the, the people of Gaza. And would is that not actually a reason to actually, yeah, as you say, to to make more of an effort to hear from people like Leila Khaled? Yeah, precisely it is. And I think it's actually fantastic to hear from someone like her who has um, a democratic secular vision for what freedom means from the river to the sea. You know, someone who says, you know, the only true path to lasting peace is one democratic state over all of historic Palestine and Israel, where all people have equal rights, regardless of their race or their religion or their ethnicity or their language. And of course, that that's but of course, Zionism can't can't, can't deal with that because Zionism is precisely based on Jewish supremacy. Um, and this, 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 this completely mistaken notion that somehow, you know, Jews need a Jewish state. I mean, you know, we can talk about the fact that Zionism has actually based, basically failed its own objectives, you know. Um, you know, Israel is not, is not the safest place in the world for Jews. Um, and Israel, by falsely equating its murderous actions in Gaza and before, um, with all with all Jews and claiming to speak for all Jews in doing so actually helps helps um, fuel anti-Semitism. So I mean, you know, Zionism has just abjectly failed on on on, a, on its claimed stated objectives, regardless of anything else. But you know, to 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 have that discussion, um, you know, well, I mean, there's people who just don't want us to have that discussion. That's that that's why um, that's why um, these right wingers don't want Leila Khalid to to speak to Australians. Would you like to comment on the irony that there's often the case that right-wing organisations complain about censorship and cancel culture, but in fact, they're the ones who, in this case, don't want us to hear from, you know, hear from a legitimate voice. Do you want to have any comments about that? Yeah, no, well, I mean, this, <laughs> you know, it's quite, the, the fact they even talk about, uh, well, I think the Executive Council of Australian Jury it, it even went so far as to say, not only she should not get a visa, she shouldn't, shouldn't be allowed to speak by video link. You know, the, the authoritarian impulse of these people is actually quite scary. You know, we're supposed to be the snowflakes and, you know, want to police people's language and all this sort of stuff. But, um, I mean, fortunately, it's not quite as bad as in Australia yet as it is, say, in, in, in Germany, where it's, um, you know, it's, it's just become completely bizarre, you know, um, to, 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 even, to even suggest that the Palestinians have been dis, dis, dispossessed, you know. Um, you, 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 you know, it's, it's, it, you, you're cancelled, you're shut down, you're possibly even charged, fined, accused of being anti-Semitic. Uh, I saw a recent um, segment by Owen Jones recently. Sorry, there's a little bit of a tangent, but you know, he 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 reported on um, research that shows that um, you know German Jews are only one percent of of the German population, yet they're fourteen percent of those who have either been cancelled or fined for being so-called anti-Semites for speaking out for Palestine. I mean, this is you know this whole do this whole thing which says we can't talk about you know you know we're not allowed to talk about what happened before October seven. You know, and really talk about what what's happened since um, is about maintaining the status quo um, and really attempt to silence discussion. But I think you know we should draw strength from the fact that uh, a recent YouGov poll shows that eighty one percent of Australians believe there should be a ceasefire. 
And I'm going on memory here, about 56% think the Australian government should do more to achieve it. So this, this grip that the establishment has had on this question uh, over the thinking of Australians is, is slipping, and it's slipping fast, and that's a good thing. Can you tell us more about Eco-Socialism 2024? Yes, look, it's a really exciting conference that's going to be happening um, where I live here in Bulu, Perth, um, the last weekend in June. Um, now, in addition to other invited speakers, in, in addition to Layla uh, Khalid, uh, who, are, just as an aside, I'll let you know that we um, we originally um, spoke to her um, and said, hey, look, we're doing this conference. Would you be able to come in by video link? She lives over in, in Jordan, and she said yes. Um, and as we spoke to her, she um, she said to us that, you know, she'd be keen to come to Australia one day and do a national tour, maybe even in conjunction with our conference or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. So we it was literally as we were in discussions with her about that, that the, um, that the Murdoch press um, found out that she was speaking at our conference and, and launched this campaign against her. But as I said, she's not the only international speaker. We've got this two two other uh, international speakers that I can um, say that we've confirmed so far. One of them is is Salim Valley, uh, and he's the um, the South African human. He's a South African human rights activist and professor and director of the Centre for Education Rights and Transformation at the University of Johannesburg. Um, and he he'll be able to speak to us about why South Africa has played such a significant role um, in the solidarity with with, with Palestine. Um, I mean, for some for some background, obviously during during the during the apartheid era, Israel acted as a conduit for for weapons to the apartheid regime um, from the United States, and South Africans have got long have got long memories. And but the to, to re- be really fascinating to him for, for him to unpack that you know that both that historical m- memory and why this is so significant for um for um, for, for South Africa today. Uh, so he, he he'll be speaking. Also, we've got Ama um, Ali Jan who's a um, historian, activist, and youth leader and president um, of the Hakuk Ekalk Party, uh, which is a left-wing party in, in, in Pakistan and a member of the Council of Advisors for the Progressive International. So we get a really good insight into struggles for, for land, for justice, and to confront climate change in the global south uh, coming from him. We've also, we'll also have a panel of speakers talking to us about the democracy movement in Singapore. And this is really important for for us in Bulu, Perth, to host this for a couple of reasons. One, because Singapore is relatively close. And two, because there's, um, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's a big Singapore diaspora community living in Perth, and there's not really yet the, 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 the democratic space to have a full discru- discussion about how you build democratic rights and, and workers' rights in, in Singapore. So we're really privileged to be able to, to sponsor that. There'll also be a bunch of other important workshops and discussions. One which I'll draw your attention to is is a discussion about uh, how to build a, cl- a movement uh, around climate change that can win. Um, this is something we feel really sharply here in Western Australia, which you know, I would describe Perth as as being the, um, the the fossil fuel death star, and it can feel and you know new and, and the gas industry rules the place. Um, if you come to Perth, you'll you, you, you'll see that. So we want to get get uh, grassroots climate activists, so people involved in Rising Tide, Disrupt Burrup Hub, and others. Uh, the fracking campaigns around the country to talk about how we can build a climate change, uh, climate change, uh, movement against climate change that can win. Um, but he- heaps more besides. So go to o- ecosocialism.org.au um, to find out more. Thanks very much for your time, Sam. And also I'll direct people to the Green Left website as well as another source of information about Ecosocialism 2024. Thanks for your time. Great. Thank you.